welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney calls for bipartisan support in arresting violent crime in the country. St. Lucians are urged to have a national conversation on the worrying trend of suicide amongst the youth. The government of St. Lucia has taken another significant step towards addressing vehicular traffic in the capital city. All that plus the latest youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle Arquois. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney has called for bipartisan support and participation in helping to stamp out the scourge of violent crime in the country. The Prime Minister made the appeal during the Parliament sitting of Tuesday, 26 March 2019. Honorable Shastney expressed deep concern about the involvement of young persons in the commissioning of crimes as he referenced the killing of Cedars resident Stanley Pistol. Mr. Pistol, who operated a mini-mart in the community, was shot on March 13, 2019, during a robbery at his place of business. That particular killing touched me. Um, to see somebody who is making a positive contribution in our society, and who is working as hard as he was. And I know the shop had been robbed previously and that's why he was there to protect his wife. Um, it's very troubling. And again, we have to do more in order to be able to guide our young people better. That the ability to walk in and to shoot somebody for less than $100 is a damning statement against all of us and our own failures. And I say collectively, not passing the blame to any one more person than another. But we have got to be able to address this with our young people and bring back a sense of values, um, particularly to life. Prime Minister Shastney also addressed the worrying trend of suicide. Honorable Shastney told the House that now more than ever, there needs to be a national conversation on matters surrounding suicide. The Prime Minister's comments were prompted by the death of a 17-year-old Denry resident. There are some suggestions with regards to bullying and other issues. And this is a very serious matter in this country. We're seeing way too many young people um, resorting to committing suicide to, to solve a problem. And I think that this is something that's going to require even a greater level of attention <coughs> and maybe some uncomfortable subject matters that we have unfortunately avoided, that we're gonna to have to address them because this is the reality of what our world is today. And again, a member from Denry South, if you can please again pass on the condolences of all of us um, to the family. And certainly um, we always empathize when a young person, particularly just getting into um, making a major contribution to our society is lost. And that was Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastney. Meantime, the Department of Health and Wellness continues to appeal to the public to seek help to deal with suicide ideation. In the last year, the department recorded a decrease in the number of suicides. The department recorded three completed suicides in 2018, compared to 13 in 2017. And officials are hoping that their efforts would result in further decrease. More from Fidel Neptune. Consultant psychiatrist Dr. Julius Gilead highlighted the changes in the suicide rates over the last three years. As was noted, between 2015 and 2017, there was an average of about seven to eight su completed suicides for the year. And that was after the national helpline was, was started. But in 2017, there was a, a bump up up to, up to 13, which we um, saw a decrease last year to three. Dr. Gilead applauded the suicide prevention efforts of the department, especially with the support of the National Helpline and also sensitization activities. The consultant psychiatrist also noted that despite the decrease in suicide rates, the department will continue to embark on initiatives to mask significant gains in suicide prevention. We plan on doing things a little better this year to continue to sensitize the public as to the presence of the helpline and to remind persons that it is there for them in case they're having suicidal thoughts. We as well want to 
to go out a little more to the other communities because our efforts last year were centered mainly in castries, apart from the TV ads. So we want to go out into the communities a little more to try to bring that help to persons out there who, who may not be able to come to castries to, to be a part of whatever activities that we're having here. Dr. Gilead is urging anyone whose life or whose loved one's life is in immediate danger because of suicide thoughts to call the National Helpline at 203. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The government of St. Lucia has joined global initiatives aimed at eliminating tuberculosis or TB by 2035. Anisia Antoine explains. Tuberculosis is a contagious airborne disease and is described by the Pan American Health Organization PAHO as the world's deadliest infectious killer. Every day, almost 4,500 persons lose their lives to TB and close to 30,000 people fall ill with the preventable and curable disease. While St. Lucia has a low burden of TB, there is still a need for persons to remain vigilant against the spread of the disease. Annually, St. Lucia records less than 10 cases for every 100,000 persons in the population. In 2018, we had a total of 5 cases of TB and 0 deaths. This is down from 2017, where we had 11 cases of TB and 1 death. And in 2016, we had a total of 3 cases of TB with 0 deaths. In many countries, the existence of the HIV epidemic has been a main cause of TB. That is, many persons with HIV develop TB disease because of their immunosuppression or low immune system. In St. Lucia, between 2015 and now, there has only been one case of TB-HIV co-infection. In St. Lucia, TB seems to occur in persons who come from low socioeconomic situations or who have other diseases that can reduce or lower one's immune system, like diabetes. Persons can be exposed to TB and be infected with TB, but not develop TB disease. TB disease can have symptoms such as a cough for two or more weeks, bloody mucus, weight loss, night sweats, and loss of appetite. Persons with TB infection but no active tuberculosis disease can be treated for dormant disease. The acting senior medical officer urges persons to get tested for disease. One of the ways to determine if someone has been exposed to TB is a skin test called a Mantu test. If your doctor advises you to do a skin test, please do it. It is free for the person getting tested for TB. It is better to know if you have been exposed to TB to be treated and cured than to develop TB disease from a latent TB infection that could easily have been treated. So, even if St. Lucia has a low burden of TB, it exists. And we hope that with awareness of tuberculosis, persons will become more vigilant. World Tuberculosis Day was celebrated on March 24th under the theme, It's Time for Action and TB. The goal is to end TB by 2035. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. After a long-running sensitization campaign, the government of St. Lucia has taken another significant step towards addressing vehicular traffic in the capital city. Here's Janelle Norvell. Parliament on Tuesday, 26 March 2019, made amendments to the Motor Vehicle and Road Traffic Act to authorize the Castries Constituency Council to install parking meters within the city of Castries under the Motor Vehicle and Road Traffic Act, CAP 8.01. Minister for Transport and MP for Castry Southeast, Honorable Guy Joseph, opined that the installation would help alleviate the traffic congestion, not only in the city of Castries, but in the north of the island as well. Because there's no parking, people want to do a transaction to a bank or to a business place. Even if there's a branch in Castries, these people would go up north because the parking is better available, even if they have to deal with the traffic congestion in the north. So creating short-term parking within the city of Castries would help in the process of regulating that the parking areas designated would have time zones so there would be areas that are very short-term parking, maybe an hour, two hours, so more people can transact their business within the city of Castries and not necessarily have to move out of town. 
According to the minister, paid parking has been on the cards for years now. However, it has never been implemented. He noted that there are several advantages to the implementation of the initiative being undertaken by the Castries Constituency Council. Minister Joseph explained. Some people may be saying, well, why, why would you introduce parking meters? That's more money for people to pay. But one illegal parking ticket, Mr. Speaker, may cost you more than what, or will cost you more than it, what it may cost you for every transaction you do in Castries if you pay for an hour or two hours of parking for the year. So when you look at the trade-off, or having to come into Castries with a driver, who would have to circle around the wear and tear, the, the fuel, all, all of the impacts that it is having. So we believe that this initiative by the city council is a very good one, supported by the Ministry of Transport, so that we can allow that process to happen in a manner that is within the legal limits of the law. Without the amendments to the Motor Vehicle and Road Traffic Act, Minister Joseph said the Castries Constituency Council would not be able to introduce the required parking regulations within the city of Castries. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And this is the NTN Nightly. Coming up, the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. Look at you breastfeeding. I give him birth just now, but I don't think I can breastfeed. Why won't you breastfeed? The thing is, my breasts are so small, I don't think I will have enough milk for my baby. My dear, you can breastfeed. The size of your breast does not matter. The more the baby sucks on your breast, the more milk your breast will make. People say your breast will fall when you breastfeed. I don't want mine to fall. Eventually, all breasts will fall. Once you wear a supportive bra, it will help maintain the muscles of your breast while you breastfeed. Breast milk is very important for your baby's health. It is complete nutrition for your baby with the right nutrients. I did a lot of reading whilst I was pregnant and found out a lot of good things about breastfeeding. Really? Like what? You will lose the baby fat much easier when you breastfeed. The baby is more intelligent and the baby gets sick less. It is also cheaper and practical since you wouldn't have to buy artificial milk or boil bottles. Breastfeeding does all that? Eh eh. Now you make me want to breastfeed. I want my baby to be healthy and smart. There's more. In addition, I saved a lot of money from not having to buy formula. Do you know how expensive formula is? No formula? How is that possible? The baby will go hungry? No, the breast is adequate for the baby's need from birth to six months. The baby needs no other foods or liquids during that period. Is that so? My sister had a baby last year and my granny insisted she give the baby Toloma and she was only three months. Nothing before six months. The nutritionist will guide you on how to introduce foods to the baby. Wow, I learned a lot. I had no idea breastfeeding was that important. Yes, it is. Breastfeeding is the best thing you can do for your baby. Do it and you will see. You will also bond with your baby. I will, my girl. Nice talking to you. I'm happy to hear that. Also encourage your friends and family too. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello once again. I'm Ryan O'Brien with your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. First off, more on the concept behind Youth Exposé, which will also mark the launch of Youth Month on April 5th at Constitution Park. The event replaced the Youth Overhaul, a youth festival to formally begin the recognition and celebration. In 2018, Youth Exposé was introduced to recognize and appreciate the contribution of young St. Lucians to the development of the island. Youth and Arts, from designers to visual and performing artists and entrepreneurs, had a day dedicated solely to them. The St. Lucia National Youth Council, in collaboration with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, will be hosting Youth Expose as the official opening of Youth Month 2019. It will include a youth march pass, an all-day exhibition and side attractions, such as culinary demonstrations by some renowned youth chefs, in addition to Constitution Park, 
Activities will also be held at the William Peter Boulevard. National Director Special Olympics Junior Emmanuel Belizer says the football team that won gold at Special Olympics recently showed grit and determination to win the competition. Mrs. Belizer spoke at the Huonora International Airport on the team's return on Saturday during a welcome ceremony put on by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. Although we have won gold again, it was a new team. It's not the same team going all the time. So there was a mix of experience and, and youth. And you could say youth because they're uh, first time um, travelers. And they actually performed, they connected and they performed well. So um, in terms of the, um, the athletes performing, we recognize that they are truly people of, this, of determination. Because when they were down got against Portugal in the finals for the gold medal, Portugal scored before them the first half and they came out in the second half and just went at it and they played and got the four goals um, four, um, four goals in the last in the last half of the game which was really really good. Belize stressed that the achievement was even more remarkable as it was a relatively new team that represented St. Lucia. Meanwhile Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports the Honorable Edmund Estefan made special mention of some of the outstanding achievements by the Special Olympics team while speaking during a sitting of Parliament on Tuesday. The team gave an amazing performance, winning gold in football, a silver in the track and field, a gold and free bronze in Boston, also known as Italian lawn bowling. 16-year-old Pauline St. Louis won gold, while 22-year-old Anya Isidore and 24-year-old Cecil Fevry got St. Lucia's bronze medals in the singles bossy competition. 20-year-old Joshua Daniel Henry won a silver medal in the men's 400 meters at the Dubai Police Officers Club Stadium, running a minute 5.75 seconds for second place. St. Lucia holds the title of Special Olympics football champions on March 20th, 2019, beating Portugal 4-1. Alec Pierre scoring in the 22nd minute, Austin Jeremy in the 24th and the 25th minutes, respectively. Portugal scored in the 18th minute, so St. Lucia was forced to come from behind for victory. With two wins and a draw, St. Lucia ended with seven points, Edging Portugal five points, Canada three points, and Sweden one point. To our nation's Special Olympic team, you and your coaches and your managers, you did a great job. Friday, we'll see the second day of competition in the Inter Secondary Schools Track and Field Championships at the Darren Sami Cricket Ground. Semi finals and finals were held on the first day, Wednesday. All indications are that it will indeed be a close race to the finish and for top honours in both boys and girls categories. And that's where we finish on our update today. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards has launched a committee to spearhead and participate in work on the adoption of international standards for cannabis. The details from Janelle Norville. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards has established a National Ad Hoc Mirror Committee of the American Society for Testing and Materials, ASTM International, on Cannabis, Committee D-37. This committee brings together representatives of educational and research institutions, state and non-state actors, with a wealth of knowledge and experience that will guide the participation in the ASTM committee and adoption of the appropriate standards. Director of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, Vern Emanuel, explained the role of the newly launched committee. It will allow us to provide the necessary input in the development of international standards for cannabis. While cannabis is not legal in St. Lucia at present, as a, and as such we do not have a full technical committee, mm -hmm. but the work of this committee will be able to provide the necessary inputs in the international standardization process and the work of this committee does not speak to any legal issues or decriminalization but this committee basically is looking at normal 
following the STM as a mirror committee and developing fruits and wishes input and leveraging the, the memorandum of understanding that we have with ASTM to fully participate in their technical committees. The SLBS has an established memorandum of understanding with the ASTM International, which is responsible for the development of American standards for testing and metrology. Under the terms of the MOU, St. Lucia can join technical committees of the ASTM and contribute to the development of these standards. In light of the growing regional interest in the use of cannabis, the SLBS Ad Hoc Mirror Committee will review and follow the work being done by the ASTM. Representative of the cannabis movement in St. Lucia, Randall Bain, said the move provided comfort that there will be structure when St. Lucia is ready to get on board the cannabis train. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, as, as we learned a minute ago, has taken the lead in, in the region, actually, by... Um, by being, you know, getting the ASTM certification and so on, and the assurances, quality assurances, guidelines, and so on. So that is so we, that's coming to the table. So the nation of Saint Lucia and regionally can um, can rest assured that 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 um, at the end of this entire process, that um, it'll be standardized. It won't just be some. Uh, ad hoc situation taking place by growers, distributors, etc., etc. It will be standardized throughout the, the life of the, of the product from growing straight through to selling and using. The MIRA committee is expected to meet four times annually to review the standards for development that are under the work plan. The orientation and launch of this new committee took place on Friday, 22nd March 2019. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle en Queer. I was in my neighborhood. It was a very dark night and I decided to go for a drink by a bar. On my way from the bar, I felt the sting to my right leg. And when I looked back, I knew it was a, a, a full of snake. If you happen to be in an area where there are snakes and you are bitten by a snake, this is what you do. You call for help and try to reach the Victoria Hospital within one or three hours. You will be seen immediately. My uncle at the time was a police officer, called the um, Victoria Hospital and told them that we come in done for snake bite. It's the only facility on the island which has a protocol and a treatment plan where you can be treated adequately. We call them before you go there so they can prepare for you. And rest assured that there are adequate suppliers of antivenom with doctors who have been trained in the treatment protocols of the snake bite. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. Merci au tard, Nisha. Monsieur, Madame, Département, qui est responsable pour information à gouvernement cette ici? Ça, c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, qui a posé tout nouvelle à Quayol, posé tout Primus Hutchinson. Département Santé, qui a continué pour procurer bonne qualité de service santé, dans le haut degré, pour cette ici qui a souffert et puis complications et maladies en noyau. Ce service a créé un bénéfice particulièrement pour la façade sud pays, comme l'hôpital Saint-Jude, où se voit trois machines qui sont très avancées pour tout le monde qui a souffert et puis maladies en noyau. Il y en a ces grands grecs qui sont responsables pour l'opération de l'hôpital Saint-Jude, Wayne Harrow, déclaré qu'il est très plein comme ces machines qui ont assisté l'hôpital pour faciliter ces patients. là on est pour considérer la quantité de monde qui a souffert et puis maladies en Haro a annoncé qu'à présent, l'hôpital a neuf machines. Il dit qu'en trois ces machines, il y a deux pour des de divisions d'analysis et qu'il pour ICU. Par conséquent, ça a augmenté le degré de service que le public a reçu pour le traitement. Haro a annoncé que présentement, l'hôpital a capturé le traitement six jours par semaine, commencé à 7 heures bon matin pour juste 11 heures soir. Ça, c'est quatre médicaments, session par patient. Mais Haro a aussi fait un appel pour cette recherche changer la façon qui a vivre la vie pour savoir battre ces mauvais maladies. Il s'y si joue pour l'exercice des relations publiques pour cette recherche comprendre plus mais l'importance pour résister pour ne pas ni cause car vous suivez le traitement pour noyau et conseiller public là pour essayer de vivre de façon pour préserver noyau. 
présentement l'hôpital saint jude ni un total de 9 machines qui avaient là pour public la trouver traitement pour maladie à noyau ministre qui responsabilité pour développement économique kai développement ville transport on va Guy joseph expliquer que ces changements qui fait en législation concernant le concile de ville castri c'est pour renforcer la loi qui a existé pour gouverner la corporation pour Ville Castri et le Conseil de Ville Castri à présent. Honorable Joseph, qui était allé à l'adresse de la Conseil Madi, expliquait aussi ce qui a fait là, c'est pour introduire cet changement en législation qui était là avant et qu'on ait de la façon pour ça opérer plus facilement en faveur des circonstances qui ont existé présentement. M. Joseph a ajouté aussi à l'explication que tous ces changements en législation, c'est pour faciliter le Conseil de la Ménager opération primaire. Particulièrement, ces polices pour ville qu'on cite là et programme mitin pour l'auto gare en ville là. Attention, selon Anouab Joseph, c'est pour former et établir une législation qui a d'ailleurs une façon pour ne pas affecter en pièce manière opération qu'on cite de ville Castri. Les résidents en village Canaoui sortis en grand limo, particulièrement ces jeunesses là, pour te nettoyer grand la rivière, village là, du moins finissement, c'est même qui est passé. Pour GIA, c'est effort, organisation pour agir, bon service et coup de main à cette ici. Chef pour l'organisation, ça là, en bureau premier ministre là, Diane Félicien, dit nous qui était très plein pour une manière de ces jeunes canaries à sortir pour participer. Ces jeunes mouns, yo te kadio, yo ni pour chen place la net. Um, um, tout ça y a fait qu'a affecté ça y a la je à la la rivière qu'a affecté ça um, la mer avec village là so yo après c'est ça nous t'es qu'a fait mais nous pas qu'aille de bout là nous qu'aille continuer pour éduquer yo à um, importance um, pour chen la rivière chen la mer chen village là net il était nécessaire um, là où le uh, uh, la rivière la tienne toute bas la la tienne chaise au dit la la tienne dix fois bas avec nous aimons poisson avec la rivière et avec la mer, ils connectent. Avec nous commençons avec la rivière, um, parce que là où était, um, c'est ça notre cadeau. Là où était bouteille là, pas quoi, pas quoi affecte la mer. Um, il quoi affecte avec, il a apprécié ça. Mais selon Madame Félicien, il y a un autre plan pour le village là toujours. Ça nous quoi fait, c'est essayer de faire um, pour que um, gros citoyen nous avec um, occuper yo nettoyer yo um, avec nous ca aussi we faire um, pour pour mener déjeuner ba yo avec we manière nous ca faire uh, différence en Canary coordinateur pour good deeds ça c'est pour agir bon service à faire son coup de main en bureau premier ministre là qui ca causer pour nous à so faire ça là Canary c'est comme ça nous entre un uh, bout programme nous hodi a mon ca merci autant pour garder mon ca ba une invitation pour je ne puis moi encore l'aider, conserver la vie, si Dieu conserve la vie, les gars présentent à l'autre nouvelle à courir. Après ça, nous qu'à vivre, Michel. Merci en pile, Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. The Atlantic High Pressure System will maintain a moderate to brisk easterly to east southeasterly wind flume across the eastern Caribbean region over the next few days. Low-level clouds drifting along this wind flow will bring a few scattered showers over the islands during the forecast period. Tides for Castries Harbour low at 4.48 p.m., high at 11.59 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay low at 6.15 p.m., high at 1.06 a.m. Seas moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 6.02 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.